This is the final lesson in the Transition Metal series of lessons from Unit F325. In this lesson, we'll look at redox titrations and the associated calculations. So you'll definitely need a pen, paper and a calculator for this lesson. So the learning objectives. You need to be able to carry out redox titrations and carry out both structured and unstructured calculations involving the manganate ion, MnO4-, and iodine thiosulfate titrations. There isn't actually much to learn here, however carrying out unstructured titration calculations can be really quite tricky, and no two exam questions are the same. So coming up with a strategy to approach these problems and lots of lots of practice is key to doing well. So, in a redox reaction, electrons are transferred from one species to another. As transition metals have variable oxidation states, they can act as oxidising or reducing agents by giving or taking electrons. On the slide are the definitions of the key terms for oxidation and reduction that we've come across many times before. We can use redox titrations that involve a colour change to estimate the concentration of a metal ion in an unknown solution or the purity of a solid sample of a metal. These titrations are carried out in a similar way to acid-base titrations. However, an indicator is not always needed if the colour change in the oxidation state of the transition metal if the change in oxidation state of the transition metal involves a change in colour. For example, aqueous manganate 7 contains the iron MnO4-, which is a deep purple colour. When it's reduced to Mn2+, it goes almost colourless. Let's begin with these titrations. The manganate ion has an oxidation state of plus 7. This ion is a very powerful oxidizing agent as it gains electrons to form the Mn2 plus ion. In order for this reaction to take place, it needs to be acidified. This is done by adding sulfuric acid to provide H plus ions. The half equation for the, re for the reduction is Mn4O minus plus 8H plus plus 5 electrons react to form Mn2 plus and four water molecules. The H plus ions are from the sulfuric acid. Usually the MnO4 minus solution is added, in, added from the burette and the end point is when the colourless solution in the conical flask turns to a permanent, very pale pink colour. It's actually a lot lighter than the picture in the slide. So a simple example to start us off. Calculate the volume of 0.05 moles per decimeter cubed potassium manganate 7, which will react completely with 25 centimeters cubed of 0.5 mole per decimeter cubed iron 2 sulfate solution. The relevant half equations are MnO4 minus plus 8H plus plus 5 electrons react to form Mn2 plus plus 4 water molecules. Fe2 plus reacts to form Fe3 plus. You do not actually need to learn these equations, um, but they come up so frequently that I advise you to become quite familiar with them. The first thing you need to do is write a balanced overall equation. Pause the video and have a go at this. This is a very common reaction in redox titrations. The equation and the remaining working is on the next slide. If you're feeling brave, have a go at answering the question before restarting the video. So now to the answer. Here's the overall equation. MnO4- plus 8H plus plus 5Fe2 plus reacts to form Mn2 plus plus 5Fe3 plus plus 4 water. The ion 2 plus equation needed to be multiplied by 5 so the electrons cancelled out. The second step in these type of questions involves calculating the number of moles of the solutions that you know the volume and concentration of. We know we have 25 centimetres cubed of 0.5 mole per decimetre cubed iron 2. To convert this to moles, we use the equation moles equals volume multiplied by concentration, remembering to convert centimetres cubed to decimetre cubed. So moles of Fe2 plus equals 0.025 multiplied by 0.5, which is equal to 0.0125 moles. Now looking at the molar ratio, 1 mole of MnO4- minus reacts with 5 moles of Fe2+, plus. so if we have 0.0125 moles of Fe2+, plus, we have 
2.5 times 10 to the minus 3 moles of MnO4 minus. Finally, to calculate our unknown volume of manganate ions, we need to use the relationship between moles, volume and concentration again. Volumes e volume equals moles divided by concentration, which is equal to 0.05, which is 50 centimetres cubed. Sorry, that's 0.05 decimeters cubed, which is 50 centimeters cubed. Unfortunately, the problems in the exam paper are not going to be quite that straightforward, so let's look at a more complex example. 1.5 grams of iron wire was dissolved in sulfuric acid to give a solution of Fe2+. And the solution was made up to 250 centimeters cubed. A 10 cm cubed portion of the solution was titrated with 0.01 mole per decimeter cubed potassium manganate 7. 19.5 cm cubed of this solution was required to reach an endpoint. To calculate the percentage of iron in the sample of the iron wire. Again, we use the same half equation as an overall equation. See how far you can get with this example. To begin with the overall equation, then work out the number of moles of the solution that you know both the volume and the concentration of. Look at the molar ratio to find moles of Fe2+. You then need to take the dilution into account to get moles in the original solution. Turn moles of iron 2 plus into mass of iron and finally calculate the percentage purity using the mass of wire provided in the question. Pause the video now, have a go and I'll talk through the solution on the following slide. So the solution. We have our overall equation between manganate and iron 2 plus ions. We have been provided with the mean titer and concentration of the manganate, so we can calculate the number of moles of MnO4 minus in each titer using the relationship moles equals volume times concentration, remembering to convert volume to decimeters cubed. This is equal to 1.95 times 10 to the minus 4. The ratio between the manganate ion and iron 2 plus is 1 to 5. So to calculate moles of Fe2 plus in the 10 centimetres cubed of solution that was used, we need to multiply moles of manganate by 5. This is equal to 9.75 times 10 to the minus 4. To calculate the amount of Fe2 plus in the original solution that was made, made up, we need to scale up. If 9.75 times 10 to the minus 4 moles of iron 2 was in 10 cm cubed, to work out how many moles in 250, we need to multiply this value by 250 over 10. This is equal to 0.024375, which is 0.024366. The question requires, requires us to work out the mass of iron in the wire, so we now need to convert moles to mass by multiplying by the relative atomic mass of iron. The relative atomic mass of iron is 55.8, multiplied by moles of iron 2, multiplied by moles of iron 2 plus, this is equal to 1.36 grams. Finally, the percentage of iron in the wire which has a total mass of 1.5 grams, so 1.36 divided by 1.5 multiplied by 100 is equal to 91%. Moving on to iodine thiosulfate titrations. These are a little more complicated than the manganate titrations. And the reaction between iodine and thiosulfate is often used in redox titrations. Iodine is reduced to the iodide ion by the thiosulfate ion S2O3-. The half equations are I2 plus two electrons reacts to form two iodide ions. And secondly, two thiosulfate ions, S2O3 2 minus, reacts to form S4O6 2 minus plus two electrons. This gives us an overall equation of I2, which is yellow, plus two thiosulfate ions, which is colourless, reacts to form two iodide ions plus S4O6 2 minus. So the colour change is yellow to colourless.
so there are two parts to the, re to the reaction. In reaction one, the unknown reacts with excess iodide to make iodine. Then during the titration, iodine reacts with thiosulfate from the burette, turning yellow to colourless. The half equations are shown on the screen. Sorry, they're not half equations. The overall equations are shown on the screen. In iodine thiosulfate titrations, a standard solution of sodium thiosulfate is added to the iodine solution from the burette. In these circumstances, the end, the end point, as it approaches, would be a change from a pale yellow solution to a colourless, colourless solution of iodide ions. However, this doesn't really give us a very clear endpoint. So in order to obtain a clear endpoint, as it is approached and the solution becomes a pale yellow colour, a starch solution is added. This forms an intense black-blue colour in the presence of iodine, even if it's a very low concentration. When all the iodine has been reduced at the endpoint, the solution turns colourless and remains colourless for at least 30 seconds. The starch should not be added until the iodine solution is pale yellow as the iodine would become strongly adsorbed onto the starch and make the titration less accurate. Let's now move on to some examples. Given the two half equations on the slide, A, construct the overall ionic equation and B, 25cm3 of the solution of iodine in potassium iodide solution required 26.5cm3 of 0.0 950 moles per decimeter cubed sodium thiosulfate solution to, 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 to titrate the iodine. What's the solution of the iodine solution and the mass of iodine per decimeter cubed? Have a go at part A and B and the next slide will have the answer. So, first of all, to construct the overall equation, we needed to flip around the thiosulfate half equation as the thiosulfate ions are reacting with the iodine during the titration. The overall equation is 2S2O3 2 minus plus I2 reacts to form S4062 minus plus two iodide ions. Next we need to carry out the calculation. We know the volume and concentration of sodium thiosulfate so we can calculate the number of moles of thiosulfate using moles equals volume in decimeters cubed multiplied by concentration, which gives us 2.5175 times 10 to the minus 3 moles. Next, we need to look at the molar ratio between thiosulfate ions and iodine, which is 2 to 1. So we need to half the number of moles of thiosulfate to get moles of iodine. The question asks us for a concentration in moles per decimeter cubed. So to calculate concentration, we need to divide the moles of iodine by the volume of iodine, which is 25 centimetres cubed or 0.025 decimetre cubed, to get a concentration of 0.0504 moles per decimetre cubed, so three significant figures. Finally, the question asks us for a mass of iodine in one decimetre cubed. To work out mass in 25 centimetres cubed, we multiply moles by the molar mass of I2, which is 0.319 grams. And to calculate the mass in one decimeter cubed, or 1,000 centimeters cubed, we need to scale up by a factor of 40 and round into three sig figs, we get 12.8 grams. The problems in the exams are going to be demanding. If you follow these tips and break each one down, you'll find them a lot easier. All mole calculations involve at least three stages. Convert to moles, molar ratio and convert out to moles. In redox titrations, converting to moles will involve a known volume and concentration from the titration, usually the thiosulfate and manganate ions. Next, you need to look at the molar ratio from the overall equation. Between the species you've just worked out the number of moles of and the species you're trying to find out. Now check to see if you need to scale up, for example if there's been an initial dilution or only 25 centimetres cubed or 10 centimetres cubed of the initial solution has been taken. This step may come after converting out of moles. 
For converting out of moles, look at what the question is asking you for. The units are often very helpful here. Do, is the question asking you for a concentration, a mass concentration, a mass, a molar mass or a gas volume? If you've learnt the three moles relationship, you should be absolutely fine. Finally, the question may have a bit on the end, such as working out the percentage purity or the number of water crystallisations in a hydrated salt. One way that the exam board increases difficulty is by using units that you're not familiar with. For example, milligrams, tonnes, grams per decimeter cubed, milligrams per centimetre cubed. Let's just have a look at how to convert between these units and ones that we're more familiar with. The slide shows how many grams and centimetres cubed there are in different units. You should be familiar with these, although the question usually does give you a conversion fact. Here's an example. Convert 0.25 moles per decimeter cubed of I2 to grams per centimeter cubed. So moles needs to be converted to grams, which is a mass, and decimeter cubed needs to be converted to centimeters cubed, which are both volumes. Firstly, using mass equals moles times MR to get mass in grams, so 0.25 moles per decimeter cubed is equal to 63.5 grams per decimeter cubed. This is 63.5 grams in 1000 centimeters cubed. So in 1 centimeters cubed we'll have 0 0.0635 grams. Have a go at converting 0 0.05 moles of I2 Sorry, it's not not, but have a go at converting 5 times 10 to the minus 5 moles per decimeter cubed of I2 into moles per centimeter cubed, milligrams per decimeter cubed, and milligrams per centimeter cubed. The next slide will have the answer, so pause the video now. Now let's put all that into practice and have a go at a very challenging past exam question. Read through the question carefully, noting down the numbers you'll need and then have a go at the, answering the question. I'll work through the example on the next slide so you need to pause the video now. So the answer. Step 1, convert to moles. The titration required 24.6 centimetres cubed of 1 times 10 to the minus 3 sodium theosulfate. So moles of theosulfate is 2.46 times 10 to the minus 5. Always double check the number of zeros in your calculation. This is where our errors are frequently made. Next, the molar ratio. This looks very tricky as there are three equations involved, but you just need to take each one in turn and work backwards. We'll do that now. Firstly, the ratio between theosulfate ions and iodine is 2 to 1. So we need to halve the number of theosulfate ions to get the moles of iodine, which is equal to 1.23 times 10 to the minus 5. In the next equation, we need to look at the ratio between MnOH3, manganese 3 hydroxide, and iodine, which is 1 to 2. So we need to double the moles of iodine to get back to the original value of 2.46 times 10 to the minus 5. And lastly, the final equation, the final ratio. This is between moles of manganese 3 hydroxide and dissolved oxygen, O2. And this ratio is 4 to 1. So we now need to divide the number of moles of manganese 3 hydroxide by 4 to get moles of oxygen, which is 6.15 times 10 to the minus 6, and this is in 25 centimetres cubed. The question is asking us to calculate the concentration of dissolved oxygen in milligrams per decimetre cubed. We have the number of moles in 25 centimetres cubed, so now scaling up, we need to multiply by 40 to get the moles in one decimeter cubed or a thousand centimeters cubed. 
which is 2.46 times 10 to the minus 4. So to repeat that bit again, we've just worked out, using the molar ratio, the moles of oxygen in 25 centimetres cubed. So to get moles in 1,000 centimetres cubed, we need to multiply by 40. Finally now, we need to convert moles to milligrams. To do this, we need to multiply by the molar mass of O2 to get grams, and then multiplying by 1,000 to get milligrams. And this is equal to 7.87 milligrams per decimeter cubed. It is possible to have done this slight, in a slightly different order and worked out that the mass of dissolved oxygen in 25 centimetres cubed is 1.97 times 10 to the minus 4 grams, or 0.197 milligrams, and then scaled up by multiplying by 40 here. It's the same thing and you should have got the same answer. So now it's just practice. During class time we'll have a go at a couple of titrations, a manganate one and a sodium thiosulfate one, and also lots of practice at unstructured calculations. So don't worry if you found this lesson difficult. We'll review it during class. And I'll see you then.